What's good YouTube? You're back on S Motorsports and today we're gonna solve some electrical gremlins on the Camaro. Like I said guys, today we're gonna to be working on the Camaro on some electrical issues. If you're new to the channel, uh, if you're just finding it, make sure to hit that subscribe button and take a look at my other Camaro videos as well. But today we're gonna to be working on some electrical issues. And what I mean by that is if you're watching this video, it's probably for a reason because there's a lot of issues with the Camaro with hard or hot start issues as well as just random electrical gremlins that the dash maybe is flickering or not working or you get a, a bouncing tack. And then basically looking at, you know, most of how to solve that is adding an extra ground wire to the Camaro and making sure you have the proper size ground. I myself do not have any of those issues, but I wanna make sure that I, you know, I'm covered and it was an easy kind of thing to do to add a ground to make sure that I don't have issues in the future. So I'm gonna add an extra ground wire today. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get at um, the electrical ground points as well that are on uh, the back of the engine on both sides and make sure those are tight as well. And then eventually I also wanna add an extra ground cable in the trunk area because looking at that, I see that as a potential issue as well with, it looks like that ground size cable is a four gauge wire, which really isn't that big for starting the vehicle. You basically have one ground wire that's connected to the back of the engine or the starter area that runs up to the front to right here. And this is where a lot of people tie in the extra ground cable and run it from this grounding point to either the tensioner bolt or uh, this bolt on the water pump. But I'm gonna look to see if there's a better spot, maybe underneath the car uh, to the back of the bell housing. So we'll check that out. There supposedly is an unused grounding stud under there that I'd like to use. I'll show you what I picked up. And it is just a one gauge cable. It's uh, what, 18 inch long. It's, it's from Tractor Supply Company. I'll put a link in the description. But um, this seems like a really nice, big, heavy duty piece. And uh, I think this is gonna work good as long as it's long enough. And then I just have some extra speaker cable, uh, which is really nice and flexible. I do have to find another ground lug, but then this will just, I'll just add this to the trunk area. So let's get to it. All right guys, epic fail to start the video already and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so we are under the car. Like I said, here is that ground stud I was referring to. It's up alongside the transmission and I was going to go to this uh, bell housing bolt, um, but my cable is not long enough. So if I slip one end over that cable stud, um, you can see that it is just not quite gonna be long enough. Um, and this is kind of a, the only, like they have like a way longer ones in the one gauge size. But I mean, it's, I don't know, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It is next to the exhaust and stuff. So um, I am going to nix this idea of going underneath and not go to the bell housing. And I think we are gonna go up top and see what of the other two options I talked about would work better. All right, guys, we got the Camaro lowered back down as we are not gonna use that lower grounding point as my cable is not long enough and honestly i i don't know if it's worth it or not just because it is close to the headers and stuff this might be a better location um i did kind of want to spread up the grounding points uh, instead of focusing everything into one but i i think from basically all the forums and stuff that they've said people that have done this already tying it to either the water pump bolt or the serpentine or the tensioner uh, mounting bolt 
that's taken care of their issues. So, and, and since I don't have any issues already, um, I think this should take care of it. So I think what I'm gonna do is use this bolt as it is a little bigger and my cable size, I think uh, will work really good on there. I honestly don't know if mine would fit there with such a small bolt. So what you have to do is basically loosen the tension on this bolt. Um, we will use a half inch breaker bar to uh, turn it uh, clockwise here, loosen the tension on the bolt, get the belt off. Then we can remove this bolt. Since that bolt is for the tensioner, we can put the cable on and it looks like it should be a, a perfect size here. So I will show you that now. All right guys, so like I said, we're gonna use this bolt. I got the cable right here. So if we, we're gonna run it basically, you know, right here. I think we'll zip tie it up to some of this other cable. It's long enough at uh, 18 inches here. And so like I said, 15 millimeter, yeah, 15 millimeter breaker bar. And we'll get this on here, maybe. And then we will just give this a good torque. Let's the belt go a little bit. And that's it. And we can use the same 15 millimeter breaker bar. So that works out good. And she's free. And I am going to take this bolt all the way out <clears throat> so I can slip my cable through the bolt. Oh, look at that. Nice. Like a glove. That'll work really good. All right, we got the uh, blue Loctite. Don't want to use the red, obviously, as you'll never really get it off then. And we will just put the tiniest of dab on here. If you can see that, that looks really good position right there. I mean, it, it's gonna be a nice clamp on there. Good size, like it's good size, like it's nice, big and flat. So that bolt has a nice clamping surface. All right guys, now we just need to loosen this uh, ground connection point. And it is a uh, 13 millimeter. And I wanna use a closed section just so I don't strip that out. <laughs> I put the original cable back on first and then put the uh, new cable over top of it, just because this has like a little hex pattern in there, which locks it in, and it makes probably a better connection uh, to the body. So I, I flip flopped them, um, and but that still works out really good. Um, as you can see, I put one zip tie down here to hold it in place. We got clearance for everything. So that should honestly, just doing that alone, should take care of any electrical issues from what I see on the forums. Um, I do wanna add an additional ground to the battery. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can find another uh, lug. Uh, if I do find that, well, I'll put it in this video. It should be pretty quick. All right, guys, so when I was looking for another cable lug, I did find this one, which was kind of already smushed. I could, I could use it though on this cable, but I actually, when I was looking through my old stereo stuff, I found this ground cable that's probably the right length and it already has all the ends on it. So I'm just gonna reuse this one because this is four gauge as well as this is this is four gauge and this is as well. So might as well use this since it's already all uh, done and then I don't have to cut this one up. So open the trunk here, get the uh, panels pulled back and then see how this lays in if this is gonna work. So I got the panel all popped off which you just pop this one off, the little spin guys. You pop this panel off, there's a uh, two Christmas tree clips, then you can get at the battery a little better. So basically, I think what I'm gonna do is use this grounding point. It's already a grounding point, um, which is different from the battery one. The battery is grounded right here. Um, and then there's another grounding point back here, but since with the sub in here, it's a little difficult to get at. So this one's gonna be really nice and accessible. So I can route it from uh, one of these, uh, studs here on top of the uh, ground post and route it to here. And basically it's just doubling up on the ground cable as this is a four gauge cable it looks like um, from the factory, which is, uh, I mean, I would say it's probably not, it could have been a little bigger. It could have been a one gauge. If it would have been a one gauge, that would have been great. It would have been fine. As you can see, the positive wire is a little bigger. This looks like a one gauge um, and really you should have those sizes match. I know why this is bigger because it's a longer run and they're using the body as a ground. With the four gauge cable being shorter, it doesn't need to be as big, but still four gauge is limited uh, in amperage. So doubling up will basically equal the size of the one gauge. Adding another ground is only gonna help. All right guys, I already got it buttoned up. So as you can see, we got 
the extra ground added and I did run it through the uh, amp clamp basically for the car as well. So I got it tied right to the ground here. I got a bunch of grounds coming off, but whatever, it works. So I got the extra ground cable added and then I tied it right to this back point, which already was a ground. That worked really good, um, clamped down nice. So I think we're good to go. All right guys, that's it for today. Thanks for joining in. And let me know in the comments if you guys have done a similar additional ground mod as well. And if it helped you, it's only gonna help. Adding the ground up front I think is definitely good. And then an additional ground on the back to make sure that the wire gauge size is appropriate for the ground. Again, I'll put the link in the description where I got the ground uh, that was from Tractor Supply. Um, it was local, so I just went and picked it up. So it was pretty cheap. I think it was only like 14 bucks. Um, but if you're not local, you, you could ship it. Give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it and uh, make sure to subscribe and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.